I'm just going to start off with you, Eric Holmes, because you, you were the first person who actually gave us a little bit of an inkling of what Bruce and I, and obviously you, were going to think of this movie alone. First of all, it's directed by this guy named John Hyams. Now, when I told you that, were you excited to actually watch Alone? Can you just tell our listeners why maybe John Hyams is a dire- director you don't mind watching as far as his movies go? Yeah, uh, his, uh, well, I know him from, uh, he did uh, one of the direct-to-DVD Universal Soldier movies. They, they got weird subtitles and I can't remember them. So that's the exact opposite problem of Alone. But uh <laughs> I watched his Universal Soldier movies around the time that Undisputed 2 and 3 came out with Scott Atkins, and Scott Atkins started doing a bunch of directed DVD movies, and then Jean-Claude Van Damme was kind of getting a resurgence, and then he had this Universal Soldier movie came out, and it was really good. Like, as far as action movies go, you think, oh, directed DVD, Universal Soldier, I haven't seen it in years, blah, 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 and then I watched it, I'm like, oh, it's really good. <laughs> And then he did another one. That one was good too. And so, so I mostly knew him from action and this is not at all an action movie, but I was, I figure if he can pull off action that well, I'd really like to see how he does horror. And as it turns out, he does it pretty well. Quick trivia question. Eric Holmes, Bruce Perky, John Hyams. Do you think he's the son of someone? Peter, Peter Hyams? Is that what he's the, name? the son of Peter Hyams. Yeah, and he grew up watching, living on the set of uh, Peter Himes films. Right? So he was during the interview, he was talking about how his dad influenced him as as a filmmaker. So that's pretty cool. There's a lot of, in my opinion, craftsmanship behind Alone. We're gonna get to your review in a second, Bruce. Just very quick synopsis centers on this woman named Jessica, played by Jules Wilcox. I have never seen Jules Wilcox in anything. I might have seen her in a movie or two. She's a character actor. She's fantastic in this movie as this woman, recently widowed woman, she's traveling in the Pacific Northwest. She actually sort of, because she cuts someone off on the road in this desolate highway and it ends up biting her in the butt because this guy, he's played by Mark Menchaca. You might know him from his work on The Outsider and Ozark and a bunch of other films. He was in this other movie I really enjoyed called Every Time I Die. Very talented actor. He plays, he's just titled in this movie as Man, so Jessica has this run-in on the road with this man. And a part of the movie, like you were saying in your review, Bruce, is it's sort of a cat and mouse game between this man and woman until it doesn't become a cat and mouse game. It becomes sort of a kidnapping hostage thriller set in the Pacific Northwest. It seems like a very bare bones plot that maybe could be relegated to a television movie, lifetime film. And that's not a pejorative that those are, Those exist on their own, and that's fine and dandy as it is, some kind of crime film on television. But I thought the way that John Hyams lends the film, shot the film, how he structured the movie in different chapters, the acting of Jules Wilcox and Mark Menchaca and this other person we'll mention as we go deeper into this review, Anthony Held, Held or Held from The Silence of Lambs. I don't know. Yeah, it's yeah. H-E-A-L-D, great character actor. He, we all know him from Silence of the Lambs. He also has an appearance in this film, but ultimately Alone is a very frightening two-hander. It's scary. I was on the edge of my seat. I, again, I love these type of movies where they're just really contained thrillers, but the fact that it's set in the Pacific Northwest, it's a great visual landscape as well. And Bruce, your overall thoughts on alone when watching this sort of bare bones thriller. Yeah, uh, pretty much along the lines of what you just said. I I appreciated that it knew what it was. That I feel like it really understands suspense. I think this movie relies greatly on suspense and not very much on surprise or shock. Perfect example would be, and I think I mentioned this in my review. Uh, shortly after the kind of cat and mouse thing starts happening where you know who the guy is, you've met him now, you know, he's kind of creepy and he keeps kind of reappearing as she's traveling further on her trip in ways that make you think that, and make her think that it's not accidental that he keeps showing up. And eventually she's at a rest stop. And I think I'd mentioned also that it almost felt like the kind of thing you see in a Hitchcock or a, or even De Palma, we've mentioned De Palma again, where you kind of have these set pieces where 
you know the setting. She's at a rest stop. You see the various actors in the rest stop coming in and going out and you're just waiting for something to happen. And then it does happen and you're waiting to see how it plays out. And that's all an example of suspense where you know the stakes, you know all the actors in the scene. So what the suspense is, is like what's going to happen as opposed to she gets out of her car and he jumps out of the bushes or you know what I mean? Like that would be the shock version of it. But this movie is all about suspense throughout. There's moments where it could have been a shock jump scare, but instead they play it for suspense. And I really appreciated that. Very cool. Eric Holmes, you were, you were on board with John Himes. Does he deliver? Does he, uh, does he deliver yes. with this movie? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Um, and, and, uh, so with the universe, with this action movies are really loud, but well staged action. And with this, um, I wasn't quite sure what to expect. And I was surprised and happily surprised that this is a really quiet movie. We've mentioned amongst ourselves that the first third of the movie is, I wouldn't say a remake of Duel, but it's definitely Duel inspired. Very much so. It's it's all filmmaking. There's no, you know, you hear the cars in the, you know, the background and everything, but it's it's just all about the cars and the action and the movement. And that's what drives the story. And that's what tells the story even to the point where they get to the, uh, the cabin, you know, there's, uh, uh, people talking on the phone, but they're not, there's not dialogue between, there's not a lot of dialogue between people. You're just watching the action and the, uh, scene kind of play out. Just, I mean, that's, that's about as pure filmmaking as you can get show. Don't tell. And that's exactly what this movie does. And I'm really surprised that a movie, I'm not so surprised that John Hyams did this because I mean, I, I could, you know, I know he's a good enough filmmaker that it makes sense that he would do this, but another, anyone else doing this movie, they would have uh, a bunch of air quotes, witty dialogue and banter and, you know, a bunch of useless, uh, you know, back and forth between people. And another thing I really like about this is that there's a lot of exposition uh, because you got to know about uh, uh, the Julie Wilcox's character, her backstory with her mom, and this and that. Uh, you got to know about the man's uh, background, which we probably shouldn't get into. Normally, in a movie, that would be really boring, but they always put the exposition in the foreground while something really neat or really suspenseful or really interesting is happening in the background. So you get the exposition out as you need to. But we're not paying attention. Okay, yeah, she has a problem with her mom. What the hell is going on back there? Oh, you know. And so I, I thought that was a really good way to do that. And it probably also has a lot to do with uh, uh, Matthias Olsen, uh, the writer. Um, I mean, I, I got to imagine some a, a lot of that was in the script as well. But yeah, I have very few, very few bad things to say about the movie. I mean, I'm probably sure I have a couple of nitpicks, but those aren't even really worth the. Uh, mentioning it was just a really tight thriller like bruce says it knows what it wants to be and it just tries to be the best version of that that thing that it can and uh and it's not going to reinvent the wheel but it's a damn fine wheel <laughs> Very good. can i add to all that that another thing i appreciated about it all the things you said are spot on but i will also add that it kept moving yeah. like it never bogged itself down there was a point where the it changes from the road in fact they even have the, the title screens for the different chapters of this movie yeah. uh, the road and the river and so on and so forth but there's a point right after she ends up out of the road where i thought oh we're going to be here the rest of the time and it didn't end up being there the rest of the time and i really was happy about that that we kept moving and changing and it just kept active and it made it very very entertaining and i also want to mention one other thing and in a bad you know bad guy kind of duo you know bad guy you know hero there is a great bad guy monologue in this movie there is a moment and i don't want to describe what it is but i loved that moment you already thought he was a bad dude because of stuff that had happened before that but that moment was really fun and i thought the way that, that scene played out and it happens during the night section i'll just say that okay I, I, I was a little confused, but you, you know what I'm that. talking about now. I, now, now I do. Now I do. Yeah. yeah. And, and the way that played out, I super appreciated how it played out because it could have gone a bunch of different ways and it didn't. 
And it just showed that her character isn't your stereotypical, dumb, you know, final girl kind of a character. She was <laughs> smart. Like she was smart throughout. She did not make stupid decisions. I would say, I mean, perfect example early on, and I'll stop blabbering here, but perfect example early on is he is at a point where in some movies he would have convinced her to do something very stupid because he's being overtly creepy and she doesn't do the stupid thing. She drives away. That's what a real person would do, <laughs> should do at least, you know? She knows he's creepy and she's getting the hell out of there. And I appreciated that. So that's, I guess that's all I got to say. <laughs> well, I would say, I, I would say that uh, not really a stupid to say, she could probably learn to drive a little better. In yeah, fact, well, uh, yeah. You know, <laughs> you have the brake pedal on your car. They work really well. But for some reason in movies, they don't like, like you got the two cars uh, and then there's a truck coming. Oh, I can't get over. Hit the brakes and not that. Yeah, good. no, defensive I agree with you. That. Just get into some defensive driving is all I'm saying. <laughs> But you know what I'm saying about the scene where it could have gone totally other way. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. He, no. Well, because that character, he was such, he was so good at uh, gaslighting her. Yeah, because yeah. he was he was playing the he was playing the victim when we know damn well it's like, dude, <laughs> she doesn't owe you anything, and you're being a creep. And it's like, well, what you know? I, I I've seen people act like that, and um if nothing else this is the what, what's his name mark, Min, mark Minchaka. Minchaka. yeah he, yeah dude he played that he played that character so good like he was yeah. creepy but like realistically creepy not like a uh, movie tick creepy you know like yeah. I, I got a movie tick so that makes me extra creepy or whatever no he's just and like a well, I'll, I'll he, let you say it, Bruce. No, 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 no. I won't say. He reminded I'm not gonna, of, us of a certain someone. I'm not going to say it. Actually, I'll, I'll let All people right. decide for themselves. Although it's obvious. Um, I was going to say because what he plays that's so awesome is he plays it um, as the stereotype, where you always wonder, like, well, Hannibal Lecter. No one's going to look at Hannibal Lecter as your neighbor and know he's not a crazy person, like a weirdo. But this guy could be your neighbor and you would never suspect it. But because of the circumstances, you know he's to be worried about. But that's the key of it. He plays it like, oh, he's an average person. So I think that, that was awesome. It was good. Yeah. Did you know, Bruce and I knew this, Eric. So Jules Wilcox, there's a, there, she broke her foot during the movie. And the movie shot in sequence. Most movies are, are not shot in sequence, number one. Number two, during production, she broke her foot to the point where they were considering scrapping the project. So she broke her foot and they wrote it into, so without yeah. giving too much away. I, I, as soon as you said she broke her, broke her foot, I'm like, those sons of bitches. I know exactly what they did. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And that, and that scene, that scene, I mean, I, I do not wish her to break her foot, but if it's going to happen, they got, they got a hell of a scene out of that. Um, <laughs> And then, yeah, that, that and not just a hell of not just a heck of a scene. I just can't imagine how they were able to shoot shoot the rest of that. that's a total trooper. So it worked. That that broken yeah. foot definitely worked. Alone, I I give this a high recommend. It's a recommend for you. You guys both. You guys both recommend alone. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I th- is Bruce, are you frozen? Yeah. Oh, are you <laughs> totally. Yeah, I thought you were. Sp- that, that, I was. I, I was freezing I, up. I was freezing up. I stopped recording because I think it might be slowing me down. So yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. So yeah. Yeah. High recommended for, for me. I really loved it. Alone, in theaters and VOD. Bruce Perky is not frozen. He's fine. It's on September eighteenth. September eighteenth in theaters and VOD.